Welcome back to the line. There are just two weeks to go before the end of New Mexico's 60-day legislative session. And the status of bills still in play can change every day, but there are bills that have died or have effectively killed without even making it out of committee and onto either the House or Senate floor. Now, one bill that was tabled and effectively died without much fuss was HB 26. That bill would have capped payday lending and other small business loans at an annual percentage rate of 36 percent. Rachel Sams, very interesting situation where we had a previous uh, agreement for 175 percent as a cap. Before that, we've got the Wild West, of course, at three, four, five, eight, nine hundred, twelve hundred, whatever it is out there that people are trying to get their arms around. But on this one, it didn't make it. What happened there in, in your view? Well, this, um, this really shows, and there's been some good coverage of the uh, impact and the heft of the small loan industry in our state. That's right. Uh, we have a it's large... Well documented, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We have a large population that's unbanked, underbanked, either doesn't use a bank at all or right. uh, maybe is going to uh, check cashers, payday lenders. Mm -hmm. And you've seen um, this indus those industries grow in New Mexico, mm -hmm. and you've seen them give a fair amount of donations on both sides of the aisle, uh, more than a fair amount of donations. I was going to say, go, this, go and let us know what a fair yeah. amount is. That's a lot of money. The Santa Fe New Mexican pointed out the, um, the size of the donations mm -hmm. that have come from both parties over the years. Right. So it just it sets up an interesting situation. I'm always curious when I look at that if there will be new players emerge, mm. uh, new types of players, maybe right. like an upstart to serve the small loan industry, but clearly the players that are there right. have a, a strong That's presence. That's been my theme for years. They just need competition. Laura, interestingly, a lot of Democrats were on the uh, nay side of these votes. What happened there? There's some pushback on Facebook and other places that the poor are not being taken care of here by Democrats. What happened there? Well, I think there's, uh, you know, I don't think it's a black and white issue. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I don't think that there's necessarily a right and a wrong um, position on this. Obviously, I think the vast majority of legislators believe that these are um, predatory loans, that some of them are outrageous in terms of the interest rates. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also recognition from a lot of um, legislators that we have a very um, uh, financially unsophisticated population mm -hmm. here. We have people who are un, you know, underbanked. They, they're not credit worthy for traditional loans. Um, they face emergency situations, and in some cases, these are the this, these. I, I hear, are the I hear that we all hear that, but does that that add up to 175 percent or 300 percent? I mean, just that need and being unsophisticated. Right. Well, I don't necessarily you know, I just, think that it does um, yeah. immediately, but again, uh, there needs to be other options available, yeah. and that's where um, it's it's either been you know the payday loans or and or getting rid of them, but nothing with regard to educating people on the financial side of things That's and right. building credit. There's there very go. little when it comes to that. And these folks that Rachel mentioned, they've spent, uh, you know, since Tom, since 2010, $866,000 in donations. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of dough in six some years. That's an incredible amount of money. Yeah. Money talks around here, apparently. Well, since 2010, right. you've had 11 different bills that have been brought up and none of them have really That's seen right. the light of day. That's right. Um, case in point. Uh, you know, it, it appears that anyway, as at the time of this taping, that there is one bill that's still alive. That's right. Uh, by Representative Harrell, uh, which caps it at a very reasonable 175% maximum interest rate. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you know, I, I for uh, uh, somebody who is uh, has financial literacy, you probably would never in a million right. years go into that. Right. Uh, but it goes and it speaks to, you know, you know, the need for financial resources mm -hmm. for some residents um, who are very quickly to say, you know what, I just need cash and I need it now. That's right. Staying with you, Tom uh, Garrity, uh, another bill that didn't make it and uh, has not made it before is the right to work bill. Uh, this has been proposed by uh, usually Republicans, of course, in our legislature uh, year after year. Basically, it would have prohibited unions from imposing mandatory fees on workers and talk us through that. You know, this seems to be the, the magic bullet for a lot of Republicans out there. There's a lot of heat building up to every session with it. Then it just dies every year. What do you it think? does. It mm -hmm. does. And, you know, uh, the interesting thing is, is that whether you call it mandatory fees or right to work, um, you know, everybody is just trying, you know, the Republicans don't like unions and, right. you know, Democrats do. And so it's one of these classic battles that we see year in, year right. out That's with right. no real measurable difference. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the arguments that are brought up on either side, mm -hmm. um, you know, those who are in favor of right to work are saying that economic development is in peril because we need it. Sure. Well, no, you know, economic development in our state is in peril because we don't have a reliable and employable workforce. Uh, that needs to be addressed first and foremost, mm -hmm. you know, right to work and other items in that same category while some of my friends might disagree uh, you know those are the things it's the icing on the cake you That's know right. nobody makes a decision based on right to work or not you might mm -hmm. not get a short list right but you know so you know hopefully you know in future you know 
uh, iterations of this, if it does see that in the future, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can have more of a reasonable and realistic discussion instead of it being a classic clash of the titans. Good point there. Stephen Spitz, 28 other states, though, have found a way to do right to work. And they're not exact, some of them are not exactly tanking. Some of them are doing pretty okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of this? Is, is it New Mexico's turn at some point, or is this just never going to no, work it's because never, of our... No, it's never okay. going to happen. Yeah. Because uh, the reason the Republicans really want a right to work is that the Democrats get their funding from unions. Mm. And so, and they have a lot of influence. Right. Uh, uh, the unions have a lot of influence with Democrats. So it's really not much of a surprise that Democrats won't go along with the right to work mm -hmm. because you know if you look if you look at the funding sources you know we were just talking about this in the last segment mm -hmm. uh, the unions tend to f to, to uh, fund Democrats and mm -hmm. businesses tend to fund Republicans it's very unlikely the Democrat and that's why the Democrats kill it every year right now on the merits of it I, I mean I would sort of defer maybe to Rachel but it seems to me like most of our unionized force are public employee uh, people. Mm -hmm. So, the, with regard to private employers, it's not much of a factor. It, as Tom said, perhaps you, you could make the short list for economic development if you had a right to work act, but it's just, it's, I, as, he's, as he says, it's icing on the cake. And actually, unions have been very unsuccessful in getting uh, unionizing new businesses, unionizing private employers. So, at least my impression is it's not much of a factor. Interesting. Rachel, the business community, again, mm -hmm. we always put you in the spot like this, yeah. trying to speak for the business community. But there's been some pretty clear indication from the business community that this was something they wanted to have happen. But Democrats say it depresses wages at the same time. So it's hard to balance those two things. What are you hearing? It's an interesting mm -hmm. one. In the 2015 session, you saw a huge push by business leaders in New Mexico. A lot of groups come together, mm -hmm. speak out, um, seeking right to work. Right. It was the most unified I'd ever seen in our business community Absolutely. on one issue. Yeah. And it failed, and it's continued to fail since. I still hear many um, economic and business leaders saying this is a factor in just kind of what you said, getting on the short list or not for a project to come from another community. But what I heard business leaders speaking out most about this year and kind of uniting around is um, trying to keep funding for mm -hmm. uh, some of the economic development programs out there, LIDA and right. JTIP, the That's Job right. Training Incentive Program. Mm -hmm. That's where I hear the business leaders uniting, not so much such a concerted push around right to work. Ah, that's interesting there. I'm gonna stay with you, we'll start our next one. Another one that didn't make it through was legalized marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting to, to me when you think about this, you talk about a few years ago with right to work being momentum. Mm -hmm. This was the year, if we were to believe the folks who were proponents of legalized marijuana, that significant steps are going to be taken forward. But what happened? It got killed nine to one in committee, nine, with a lot of Democrats voting against it as well. What's your thought on, on that one? Where are we on legalized marijuana yeah. now in New Mexico? A lot of the objections that I saw raised by legislators mm -hmm. were around social issues. Right. So this is not a discussion about um, you know money that could be raised by legalizing marijuana in our mm -hmm. state. That's not what our discussion seems to be here. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Colorado, you have the 28% tax on recreational marijuana, and right. you're, they're thinking about and using that money mm -hmm. here it's more of a question of are we comfortable with this in our community right Stephen you know interesting listening to that committee hearing and then also some of the follow-up quotes it was, it's just fascinating to hear committee members that I know have heard this argument going now three four years still coming from almost ground zero about the issue every time it sort of comes up <laughs> it's true it's very interesting and so the other the big touching on what Rachel just mentioned what also was expressed was the idea that there was a lot of concern about uh, drug use for kids right. in this. This came up a lot. It wasn't very different from Colorado where we'll deal with that. It's more of an adult thing here. Is that a legit concern for New Mexico? I mean, look at where we are with opioid abuse and everything else here. You Why know, shouldn't we be concerned? I, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not really an expert on that. I mean, there are a lot of studies that show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, marijuana is a gateway drug in the sense that a lot of people who do other drugs mm -hmm. uh, start with marijuana. But most of the people who smoke marijuana don't do other drugs. Right. So, you know, I, th I think the studies, by and large, don't support it, it as being mm -hmm. a particular gateway drug. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have uh, Rodella, uh, uh, who was the chairman, chairwoman right. uh, of that committee, and she, she looks out at, uh, where is it, Laura? What, her county, Rio yeah. Arriba County? Yeah, Rio yeah. Arriba yeah. County, and it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's devastated right. That's by, right. drug, mm -hmm. by drug problems. And yep. by the way, she is married to Tommy Rodella, who is the sheriff of Rio Arriba County, so I'm sure she heard 
plenty of about law enforcement and the worries about drugs uh, from him. That's a good He's, point. by the way, in the clink right now. That's right. That's right, Mr. Rodella. Uh, interesting, Laura, I'm wondering if the idea that Mr. Sessions, our new attorney general, has announced that legalized marijuana is actually on the verboten list for him had some impact on these folks. Meaning, when you have, you know, the federal side's kind of squishy, the state side's kind of squishy, it just didn't seem like it was the right time if you, if you factor the session stuff in there as well. Well, I mean, certainly I think that's a consideration. Yeah. I mean, we, we have to be realistic in that the federal government still doesn't sanction, you know, any kind of marijuana. It's still on the right. list of, of prohibited um, drugs mm -hmm. and so but I don't necessarily think that was the major factor for the members in, of this committee I really think it was a local issue mm -hmm. um, and and certainly for um, representative Rodella I mean it is a big issue in Rio Reba County it's one of the has one of the highest drug use um, drug abuse problems in the state mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know culturally it's just very different here to think about sort of the the issue of legal uh, recreational so again we're talking about recreational use Good not, not medicinal. Distinction. Yep. Um, it's a big difference and I think for people that's just sort of a cultural issue to try to get past. Uh, I think it's somewhat unfortunate that the benefits financially um, that Colorado has seen did not come up as much because right. so I do think that's been a significant factor that's um, changed the tone of the discussion in Colorado from the governor who initially opposed it mm -hmm. to now seeing the financial benefits of it. The other thing is that we were talking about children and the risk there I saw a report where, interestingly, in Colorado, um, you know, because it is now regulated and all that, they use um, child-proof uh, containers when oh, they right. sell them, That's right. and they don't sell to anyone under 21. Whereas in the you know underground market, when you're buying from a drug dealer, they don't check IDs. They're not going <laughs> to worry. Right. I mean, it's a baggie, right. so you're right. not talking about <laughs> anything that's child-proof. And I think in that case, there's some issues that that may not have been come up as much, but I, I still think, you know, with any major change like this, it's gonna take multiple years. That's right. And it's not surprising that it will take, a, you know, it's now been a few years that they've tried to bring it up and it will continue to be mm -hmm. um, an issue in the next few sessions, I would expect. Yeah, you gotta think, Tom, though, for the folks that were proponents, this has had to have been crushing to watch a nine to one vote happen in front of your face when it's felt like we were part of this national trend with all these other states kind of inching our way towards something. Now it's, you know, gone the other way. Yeah, you know, Representative McCam McCamley, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he probably the sponsor of the it. bill. Yeah. yeah, he was the mm -hmm. bill sponsor, and he, you know, he said that uh, you know it's it's inevitable, right? And you know, he might be right, right. but this year it's dead. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is reflective of how the legislature views things. They just have other priorities right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll be back with his bill, and the bill will probably have a nine-two vote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eventually, we'll catch. It's a big up. committee. And there I you just go. Will, will think, yeah. Why were the Democrats pushing this? Uh, why did they think it was going to pass when they knew that our governor would veto it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like to make a almost a complete to... waste of time. I don't time, think all the know? Democrats push it. I mean, I no, think there's definitely... But, I mean, how, how is it ever going to get into law? Right. right. And there's right. some, I yeah. think that there's some people like McCamley and others that are members of the House that represent a particular constituency. I agree. Right. You know, That's and right. they push issues right. because yeah. of that. No, he's earnest in his That's right. position. Definitely. That's all the time we have for that.